Hey, what's up guys, Tolly Dubbed here, and today I'm doing a video review for the Logitech G502 Hero. Now this is a refresh to the old school G502, which is by far one of the most popular gaming mice in the world. I don't mean to say that as a marketing, I genuinely mean it's among one of the most popular gaming mice that's ever been sold. Now the G502 that you see on the right is the original non-RGB, I know, OG G502 uh, that used to be out there. That's been replaced with the new Hero. And in this review, I'll be comparing the two in terms of performance, design, build quality, and everything like that. But first, let's talk about pricing. In the UK, the G502 Hero uh, is coming out at around 80 pounds. In the US, it can be found for $80. I know, convenient for Trump and stuff. But nevertheless, um, um, in the UK, um, that means that the G502 regular, or the RGB variant of this one, can be found for £50, whilst in the US, the regular version can be found for around $55. In other words, you're paying a slight premium for the new Hero. And in this, uh, in this review, I will be comparing the two based on the fact that there's that little extra premium to see what do you exactly get for that extra money and if you should ever upgrade if you had an original G502. So first of all, let's talk about um, the design and build quality. Now, as you can see, you might be able, well, you might be able to see there's a frail cable uh, that can be found on the right-hand side, and that's because Logitech have design, uh, decided to shorten, not shorten, um, <laughs> make the diameter of the cable a little thinner and the braiding a little bit better, and therefore hope for the fact that it doesn't um, frail as much as the original G502. So, if you're someone like me who found the cable to look quite ugly in my opinion, then hopefully that will no longer be the case with the new G502. It feels a lot better and um, my, from my experience from older uh, mice, especially, with, uh, especially Logitech mice that had a smaller um, diameter uh, cable, then I found that it was lasting a lot longer uh, and wasn't ending up like this. And this applies for headphones, um, let alone mice. Now, unfortunately, the cable is still non-removable, so I don't know what Logitech were thinking there, but nevertheless, it's non-removable. Underneath, you've still got the um, adjustable weights, which do come included in the box. You've got a thir uh, th 36 gram, um, th 3.6 gram per weight adjustment, uh, so you can add up the weight. Now, the default weight um, on these mice are equivalent. They haven't changed, and as some might say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's 121 grams. That's for the mouse only. The optional weights, uh, as five of them, uh, equate to 18 grams of extra weight. Now, in my opinion, I still find that a little bit too heavy. I still prefer around 90 grams for um, a gaming mouse, especially when it comes to flicking. If you're a sniper or opper, so it's just as in CSGO, I think you'll find that this mouse might be a slightly a bit too heavy. But nevertheless, um, Logitech have opted uh, for that. Now, in terms of design-wise, it's pretty much identical, apart from the fact that the blue accent over here on the original G502 has disappeared. The RGB variant got rid of this blue accent anyway. Um, so if you've got a more a newer G502, you will notice that it's exactly the same. In terms of button layout, it's again absolutely identical. You're able to see that you've still got the two buttons um, on the left um, side uh, mouse button. You've got by your thumb, you've got the two uh, left hand ones over here and the one um, just here. And then at the top, you've got one extra button and then you've got that uh, button which releases um, the hyper scroll wheel and that means you can scroll infinitely. Now, I love that feature. Uh, I like what they've done, and it seems like they've also updated a slight bit uh, to the uh, actual wheel. It looks slightly different, and I'm pretty sure that's not just based on wear and tear that I've had. It does feel uh, slightly slimmer um, and um, slightly better. Uh, very small adjustment, but one that is definitely noted for those who would use it on a daily basis, like myself. Now, other than that, you, it's still a right-handed mouse. It's still aimed at those people. You can't use it with left hand. It'll feel really awkward. And there's no removable pads on the side or customizable buttons like you'd find on other Logitech products. So in terms of design build quality, I think it's definite improvement. It's very slight improvements, but I know why Logitech haven't gone to town with it. That's simply because if something isn't broke, why would you go um, ahead and fix it? So this mouse is very really refreshed in a way that let's not try and uh, break anything. Now I did mention the RGB lights. Now you can customize these from um, the, the software. You can see the Logitech G logo has uh, updated uh, since the original uh, Logitech um, gaming um, logo had uh, on 
on the G502. Again, the RGB lights you will have on the newer um, uh, G502, which I mentioned in terms of pricing wise. Um, so bear that in mind, this one is just the old school one. But RGB lights aside, what else do you get? Now the biggest change over here is the internals. What's found inside these mice? Now the sensor inside this one was the PWM3366 sensor, which goes up to 12,000 DPI. It was highly respected as one of the most well, the most practical and best mice uh, sensors out there that was uh, built with PixArt. So Logitech teamed up with PixArt, which are very well known for creating um, very good mice sensors and created this mouse. Now, in this one, however, we've got uh, Logitech's very own Hero Sensor. Now, I tried to get Logitech to give me a bit more info about the Hero Sensor and if it was still made in collaboration with PixArt, but from what I understand, it is very much Logitech's own sensor that's coming to play over here. The difference is over here that it has 16,000, up to 16,000 DPI, which is a lot more than you'll ever need. But other than that, in terms of how it tracks and how it performs, it performs pretty much identically to the 3366 sensor. However, Logitech do boast about its efficiency and how the um, sensor is efficient. Now, in all honesty, for a wired mouse, I don't think efficiency is ever going to be useful or going to be something um, of, of importance to a gamer. Of course, if you go wireless, then it's a completely different um, issue because it, it'll give you better battery life with a more efficient sensor. But for a wired perspective, Right here, the only difference that I found was that extra DPI that I will never ever use. So in terms of performance wise, I can just say that it's equivalent to the 3366 sensor. Coming in my Counter-Strike tests, um, in terms of clicking, in terms of, um, I know that's got nothing to do with the sensor, but in terms of clicking, in terms of moving left and right, in terms of dropping the mouse, uh, in terms of flicking, um, and in terms of the one-to-one uh, -one tracking and various surfaces, this mouse, the Hero sensor, performed identically to the 3366 sensor. In other words, you're getting pretty much the, well, pretty much, you're getting the identical sort of performance that you'd find in the older the model, which was very highly respected and very highly reviewed by um, reviewers like myself. So, in other words, the performance hasn't changed, which is great. So now, why are you paying that extra money? And that makes two of us. Why are you paying that? I, I honestly wouldn't know. Other than the design changes I mentioned um, at the more towards the beginning of this video, and obviously the price, which is very much different between these two models, you're not very much getting that much extra. Now, of course, you might argue, oh, you're getting the Hero Sensor, you're getting extra uh, 4,000 DPI or whatever it might be. That's all great, but that's not things that are going to win me over as a, as a gamer because I'm never going to go over, let's say, 2000 DPI on, on a realistic basis. I'll never go over that. And then it, on top of that, in terms of if it's um, fraying or, or you know the cables breaking, I'd wait until it really fully breaks or really starts uh, annoying me for me to having to change based on the build quality. And at that point, I might even RMA the mouse because uh, the mouse might be under warranty. So long story short, if you're looking to upgrade from the G502, don't. Keep your G502 until it literally breaks down or you need to claim it on the warranty. If you're looking for a new mouse which really does cope with everything and you don't mind paying a little bit extra premium for the small little uh, feature upgrades that I, I mentioned in terms of the build quality and design, then get the G502 Hero. It'll perform identically to G502 and you can read up countless or watch countless reviews of the original G502 and you'll see how good of a mouse it is, especially with all the button configurations that can be fully customized through the Logitech software. Finally, before I end this video and before I get flamed, I'm just going to show you how the G502 um uh, how the G502 uh, software looks like. It's pretty much like all the Logitech gaming software. I was just trying to get the right mouse, but it hasn't changed at all. Um, obviously, you'll need the latest version of uh, LGS, which is Logitech gaming software, in order to get this. But nevertheless, you can see you've got all the customizable buttons, which right now I've left it on default and just put the DPI down to 1,300. 
You've got the lighting controls, which can be independent from um, the, the, the logo or the DPI switch. There's a DPI switch button, which is located over here, which I've got disabled simply because I've only got one DPI color. You can change it by a fixed color, breathing effect or color cycle, change the rate and also change the brightness. Um, and finally, you can have a little heat map of where you've been clicking and what you've been using. So that's pretty much it guys. In terms of performance goes, now I would show you a video of me gaming, but honestly I do find it a little bit pointless to show a video of me gaming because it's not really gonna prove anything of how good or bad the mouse is. I just take my word from it, this mouse is very good in terms of performance. Is it worth the premium? No, in my opinion. So if you're gonna be looking for a mouse, either get this mouse, or if you don't mind paying an extra premium for the little features I mentioned, then get this one. So there we go guys, I've been totally dubbed. Hopefully you enjoyed this review. Make sure you give it a like, comment, subscribe, as it always helps the channel grow. Take care guys, totally dubbed out. Bye bye.